it's hard to uh, pick out one little area to talk about with you. I wanted to kind of clarify a couple things I was reading. You were in the post-war Glenn Miller band. Now, Glenn died at what point? Before you started? Well, he died in the service. Yeah. yeah. Are, are, we, are, we going? Years. Are, are you on? Yeah, we're going. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Miller died, uh, must have been about 1944. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It was in there somewhere. Well, during the war. And you were a singer at that point. Me, I never sang. <laughs> Ooh, God. I, the worst singer in the world. I used to get, like, almost an F in chorus, you know. I was a musician, but I, that's a different thing. But your wife was this, was she a singer in the band? Your future yeah, oh, wife? Yes, yes. Uh, Jenny was a singer with the, a group called the Melt, um, she was with the Meltones, with, with uh, Melt Ramey's group, but then she, the group she was with with Tex Bendick, it was the Mellow, Mellow Larks. And uh, close harmony groups, you know, that's, uh, both of my girls do that, that kind of singing. Yeah. Duwas. No, no, it's before Duwas. No, it's, uh, li well, you know, like the, the Manhattan Transfer do it now. That's, that's the kind of stuff. My daughter's going into, my daughter Monica's going into uh, the Los Angeles production of City of Angels. So we're happy about that. Wow, musical family then. Yeah. Was it a little tough for you being in a steel town when you grew up playing the piccolo and being a musician? I didn't know any better. <laughs> that, I, knew, I knew that I was a little different, you know, because uh, I played the piccolo and I played the band. I used to uh, piccolo in the band. It was flute in the band. And uh, I started playing piano and I used to play all of the uh, weddings, Lithuanian, Polish, Croatian, Italian, Greek, all of those weddings I used to play. And uh, with no music, you know, we used to go out and play. They call them gigs now, but uh, we used to call them jobs two and three dollars a night, you know? And uh, used to go out and play those. Knew all the tunes. I still know. I could probably do the same thing now if I had to. <laughs> do you remember actually your first composition that was an original one? And did it ever appear in anything? No, I, I, I wrote a piece, I was, oh, about that time there was a, the, these big piano pieces, the Stairway to the Stars, and uh, these kind of, quote, uh, pianistic tone poems, and I wrote one I, I can't find it anymore, called Manhattan Moods. I thought it was really something, you know, piano solo with all of the nice chords in it. I mean, you, were you one of these kids growing up that uh, listened to the radio a lot late at night trying to get input into music that you wanted to hear? Did you go around listening to people play, or what was really uh, getting you excited? Radio was the total, uh, was your total outlet. Either you heard them on the radio or uh, if you heard the music on the radio, you know, or you, the big bands were in vogue when I was a kid. We're talking about oh, 30s, really, up until 41 when I left, 42 when I went to the service. But the big bands were in vogue, and the only place you could hear them was on the radio. And they used to be a lot. They had a lot of uh, uh, what they called remotes, the big bands from uh, one Cincinnati. A lot of them came out of Cincinnati for some reason or other. And uh, Glen Island Casino and uh, the Meadowbrook in New Jersey. And they were on uh, every night. And we had one of those sets, one of those at Water Kent. Mm -hmm. And used to listen to that stuff. Yeah, but, was well, that... It, was, it was very inspiring. Was the only outlet we had, movies, you know, I went to the movies once a week. But the thing that was the real communicator in those days was radio. But that's what got you excited. Benny Goodman, Tommy Dorsey, yes. all those bands on the radio, and you wanted to do yeah. something like that. Yeah, well, I got the. Then, of course, I started buying their records, and that was a big, uh, a big uh, step forward to uh, kind of analyzing and just listening. I was, a, I was a fan, you know, like kids know they can name the the Stones off. They can name all of the the groups around Aerosmith. All of these, they know everybody in the band, you know. I used to know everybody in, in those bands, except that they had a lot more people in the bands. And I used to know who the third alto man was and, yeah. and the fourth trumpet, uh, things like that. You just when, you, when you're young, you uh, soak up everything. Were you a real, f I mean, obviously you had to be a very fertile composer if uh, when you first went to work for Universal. I mean, you just basically went to work and did nine to five cranking out music pretty much, right? That's right. We, uh, it was nine to five. I used to drive in. We had a house in Northridge then, which was, it's just in the San Fernando Valley, 
way up in the northern part of it. And uh, I used to drive into Universal Studios, which is just on the edge of the valley. Uh, about a 45 minute ride each way. And uh, put in my, we, we, we didn't have to punch in though, you know. After all, we were musicians. <laughs> but basically it was cranking it out pretty much. Right? Yeah, well it was, uh, we, we just kept getting assignments and uh, we thought nothing of it, you know, just, Hell, I was happy to be doing it. Really, you know, it was it was a steady uh, income. It was for six years. But the variety of things. I mean, uh, France is the talking mule. Well, we had Francis and uh, Bonzo and Mon Pa Kettle and uh, all of the creature pictures. You know, I we have an album out now, the uh, Mancini and Surround, with uh, with my Mancini Pops Orchestra. And I did a suite of all of music from, it came from outer space, Tarantula, and uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. And that was a lot of fun. And that's the stuff, the kind of thing I did. But then I would go from there to the Glenn Miller story, which was a good picture, and uh, Benny Goodman's story, which was a kind of good picture, and then Touch of Evil. I, I was all over the place, all over the place. And I guess that was exciting, really, for a young man, because the variety of work was so great. Yeah. No, it was... Uh, it was the best uh, apprenticeship I could have had. I still fall back on, I mean, on all of the basic, my work habits and everything were formed in those days. And I, I still work with the exception of maybe some electronics that's, that have come along since that time. I still work uh, the same way. I know when people think of you, they really think Henry Mancini, well, he's the Babe Ruth of composers. I mean, particularly in movie scores, but you actually, uh, by a very uh, kind of I'd a rather, rough... I'd rather know that. How about the Roger Maris? <laughs> Roger Maris, yeah, okay. Roger beat, Maris of composers. He beat Babe Ruth. But okay. I'll take Babe Ruth. All right. <laughs> uh, home run hitter, yeah, we'll say. Yeah. You actually had a, a strikeout with a kind of a tough director on the Universal lot with one of your mm -hmm. soundtracks, Mr. Well, Hitchcock. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that. I found out uh, from my colleagues that uh, many of them it's happened to them, too. It's just a matter of, uh, in the picture frenzy, I. Uh, did a score. He, I thought he liked. He, he, he thought he liked it too. And then uh, when it got into the uh, final assembly, he, he didn't think it was right. So I was crushed, crushed. But I put that. I, so I don't throw anything away, you know. I put that uh, piece. The, the my, my main title, my main music from Frenzy. I put it on this surround album that's out now, and I, I called it Frenzy Rejected. <laughs> I listened to that today, by the way. Yeah. Do you find yourself repeating yourself ever? You know, when you're, you're having to crank out a lot of music, do you ever find yourself writing something today that you forgot that you, it was something you did in, say, 61 and you didn't even realize that's what you're doing? Well, I never, uh, I never stole, from my, stole from myself in that respect. But I think one has, uh, and I think it goes along everybody, almost anybody that writes has a certain inner core of uh, either harmonically or melodically or instrumentally things that, I don't know, come up to kind of give you a style, I guess. Although in some, a lot of pictures that I've done, if you didn't know that I had done them, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it was, was me writing because it doesn't have the trademarks. I have, I have a lot of baggage, you know. I have trademarks that people associate with me. And it's been a, it's, well, it's brought me uh, everything I have, but then again, it's uh, worked against me with people who figure that that's me and they don't want me to fool around with, uh, with let's say, a dramatic picture that they have that doesn't uh, call for that kind of thing, not knowing that I can do what they want. It would really be hard to compartmentalize you. I know I've heard you talk about this before. I mean, you have done a lot of romantic things and you obviously have done great in those. You've done a lot of mystery type mm -hmm. movies, uh, and you've done a lot of other genres, but I guess you're really known for The Breakfast at Tiffany's, Days of Wine and Roses. The, your biggest successes have been with yeah, that's romance. Yeah, right, right, absolutely. And uh, romance and light comedy and, uh, well, yeah, like Charade, Pink Panther, all of those things. Yeah. That's why I say I don't, uh, uh, that's the good, the good news, you know, that's the good part of the coin, and it's been very good. When you say like John Williams, I think that's the other composer that people think of when they think of movie music. How would you say you differ from his style? 
<clears throat> if I was a director, you know, and I was looking mm -hmm. for someone to do my movie, and I know of you two guys, obviously I think I may know a few more, but I mean, those are the first two names that come to mind. What's different in what John Williams would do for you than what Henry Mancini would do? Well, be? what John Williams is known for, John can do just about anything. I mean, he's, he's a marvelous all-around composer, but what, of course what he's known for are the big epics, the big, the big, uh, the space pictures he did, uh, the uh, Lucas pictures, and uh, the Spielbergs. And he's come into a, an awful lot of other uh, uh, Home Alone, you know. And so I would say that, uh, but his his trademark, I would think, would be uh, would be the big the big orchestra, the, the uh, large orchestra sound. And then I guess your particular trademark. When I think of Peter Gunn, dun dun dun, it's, it's a strong rhythm line, or a dancing string, or a little piano number. It's more of the smaller, uh, but pointed pieces. Well, it's well. If you're going back to Peter Gunn. That was almost like chamber music, you know, chamber jazz. With we didn't have a very large orchestra for that. But uh, yes, here again, what you get known for, and I, and I, the Pink Panther is 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 an out and out uh, kind of swing piece, mm -hmm. you know with the tenor sax and all of that business. So, uh, yeah, I would like to be known as a romantic guy. <laughs> What's a good M.O.? Um, I was looking over, you, by the way, you had you have something that a lot of people don't have. John Williams can't say he's got this. Uh, that's a number one record. Hardly anybody has a number one record. In <laughs> fact, Johnny Mathis, who you're working with tonight, has never had by himself you mean a, single? a single number one record, and you have. Well, I, I, there you go. I got lucky that time. Uh, <clears throat> that was Romeo and Juliet, and you have to figure that was 1970. And uh, rock and roll was really, really hot, really cooking around there, cook, cooking along. And I see, I had seen the picture, Romeo and Juliet, and uh, been impressed by, the, by the, this one recurring theme that Nino Rota had scored uh, a good deal of the picture with. And I came out of the movie and I said, gee, well, who hasn't, nobody's recorded that darn thing. I wonder why. That's when people were recording picture themes. Now they're not, not, not too much. So I uh, was doing a piano album at the time, The Warm Shade of Ivory. And uh, I got the copy and then I made the little arrangements. Very, very simple piece, you know. And we put it out, the, we thought, we, th we put out a single and we thought the big one was going to be Windmills of Your Mind. You know, that was going to, that won the Academy Award that year. So we put that out, they used to have A and B sides, maybe they still do. But the, put the, the A side was that, and the B side was Romeo and Juliet. And, and strangely enough, a rock and roll station in Orlando, Florida, put the record on one night, maybe not even scheduled, you know, but after they, they, all the kids had gone to bed and all, they thought they'd gone to bed. It was put on about 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, just as something to get away from the pounding. And uh, that, that was it. The, the, the minute that record went off, the, the, the uh, lights came on in the studio. You know what I'm saying, the, the telephones and everything. And it just went across the country, became number one. Yeah, you knocked Get Back by the Beatles out of first place. And that's quite a compliment. Did I do that? That was the number one record before yours. Well, hey, all right. <laughs> what are the first things you think of when, uh, when I name these particular things you've done? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Well, I think of Audrey Hepburn, and I think of uh, just how she, how inspiring. That was the first of our four things together, how inspiring she is to watch up on the screen. Mm -hmm. You have to be good when she's up there. Pink Panther series. Yeah, very, very enjoyable. Very, uh, I got to meet uh, um, Peter Sellers and I became friends. David Niven and I became friends through that picture. And it was a... Uh, Kind of well, it turns out once in a lifetime kind of, kind of picture to do. Peter Gunn. That started everything. That that was uh, before that. I was nine to five. <laughs> After that, I was, uh, I guess, nine to nine around the clock. You know. The days of wine and roses. That was a good change of pace for me because I had done Tiffany's Gun, Mr. Lucky, a couple of other things, and. Uh, this picture came along at exactly the right time because it was a dramatic picture. And it also gave uh, Johnny Mercer and uh, me a chance to, to write the song, which has, you know, has become a standard. Hatari. 
that was that was a that was another kind of mold breaker for me because that had a lot of music in it, and it had music that uh, I had never kind of done before, uh, with the wild animals and all of that kind of business. And it also was a springboard for the Baby Elephant Walk. An offbeat one, but uh, one that more people probably have heard than almost any of your music. The theme from the Today Show. Not today. We did uh, nightly news. Yeah, well, that was the. Yeah, I did two things for three things for NBC. Uh, the nightly news they they used oh, about ten years ago, and uh, before John did his, and then the other one was the uh, election news coverage. You know, dum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum ba. But I think I'm most famous and revered for the uh, viewer mail theme for David Letterman. <laughs> You even did Bob Newhart's show. What did, did you do Char Charlie's Angels? Is that just something you did for the album that I have at home? I uh, I recorded that. So that was written by Jack Elliott and Alan Ferguson. Because you know. you've done so much, I, I get confused about. What do you do with all these Oscars and Grammys? That's really a problem, actually, in your case. You've got so many of them. Where do you put all these things? Well, they don't take up that much space. You know, they're only this big. <laughs> they take up it's that a lot much of space. dusting that goes on. That's 20 or so of these things. Yeah, well... We have a special kind of rag that cleans them, <laughs> kind of stuff that won't scratch. Now, in the living area, it's not, not conspicuous or anything. We have the Oscars are in the bar. Then I have a shrine for the, for the Grammys. Mm. Which Flower, one means? Flowers there every once in a while. Does one mean more to you than the other? How about the, all these awards in general? I mean, how do you look at that? I mean, I guess it's recognition for sure of your, of your work. I mean, how do you get your strokes? I mean, is it people buying your records? Is it winning awards? What is well, it? Well, it, it's a little of everything, isn't it? It's, uh, it's being able to be in a position where you, you even, like now, even when I get nominated, like last year I was nominated again for the Grammy. That's pretty good since the Grammy started, uh, I mean, 30 years ago? I don't know. I, you know, we were the first album of the year. Peter Gunn was the first album of the year. But uh, uh, I think the uh, most prestigious of all awards is the, uh, I'm not going like Nobel Prize and Pulitzer and things like that, but of the show, uh, show business oriented one, I think the Oscars still have, has the, uh, the want to get feel about it, you know. Grammys, of course, Grammys are fine. But there's so many more of those, so many more categories. And is there anything left for Henry Mancini to keep him excited? I mean, is there kind of a kind of movie that you would like for me to get you today, if I could, or uh, uh, something you would really do, you're just dying to score, or you pretty much done it, and well, whatever I've, comes along? I've done an awful lot, and uh, I, I still uh, would like some good. You know, good is good is the key word here, because uh, that's. The good ones are usually the ones which you really are taxed and really pressed to come up with something because you, if it's a good picture, you know a lot of people are going to see it. And uh, I think it just, uh, it just makes your juices run a little faster.